Now, government responses to the pandemic have been very different across Europe. There's been intense discussion about mixed messages, U-turns and the debunking of misleading claims. Alistair Campbell used to be the Director of Communications for the former British Prime Minister Tony Blair. He joins us now from London. Thank you very much for speaking with us here on Good Morning Europe. The UK and plenty of other European nations have had such mixed messaging throughout this pandemic. What is it that they could be doing better and what mistakes do you think they've been making? Well, I think that we, we here in the UK have probably seen the worst of the mixed messaging. And I think that flows from something that is affecting politics in many parts of the world, which is populism. The belief that actually you worry less about the facts than, than you do about the impression that you're trying to create amongst the public. And I, and I do think that from the very start, when Boris Johnson wanted to kind of invoke a sense of British exceptionalism and then constantly saying, we'll get it done in a few weeks, we'll see it off by Christmas and then into Easter and now we're into the third lockdown. And I think with other countries, you know, every country in the world is having to deal with this. I think the ones, my sense is the ones that have done it best have been the ones that have, have really had two principles underpinning their approach. The first is absolute rigorous approach and understanding and appreciation of the importance of the facts and basing decisions on that. And the second is actually taking the public into their confidence about the difficult decisions they're having to make and, and the difficult choices they're facing. And, you know, I, I think on both of those here in the UK, we've, we've failed very, very badly. So it's about having an adult conversation with the population so that they can come on that journey. And usually it's politicians who call the shots in the day-to-day -day running of government. But throughout this pandemic, we've heard time and time again that governments are being led by the science. Why do you think it is that governments find it so difficult to get on board with handing over that control to the scientists and following their advice? Well, I think because in, in democracies, uh, you know, we, I, we, you've seen this all over Europe. You have lots of scientists who, you know, have got much experience, much knowledge, and they give their advice. But even within the scientific body that is advising different governments around Europe and the rest of the world, there will be differences of opinion. And ultimately, it is up to the politicians to make the, the political decisions. And I think, again, going back to the point I made earlier, uh, what happened here, I think, in the UK, and I think I saw this elsewhere in different parts of Europe, is that, in a sense, being led by the science became the, the way that they justified doing things that were very difficult at the start. But then they got themselves into a position where it's almost like they, could, they couldn't just absorb the science, take account of the science, and then make the decisions. And when you have this conflict between a very fact-based approach from the scientific community and this populism that we're seeing infecting parts of the European body politic, and you know, notably here in the UK and Poland and Hungary and other places, where you know, frankly, they don't they, they they will take the bits they want to hear to tell the public what they think they want to hear. So literally 24 hours before the lockdown that was announced last night. Uh, Boris Johnson was basically suggesting there was something terribly wrong with us if we weren't sending our children back to school. A day later, the schools are shut. Why the change? Because the science has caught up with the, with the populism. Do you think that populism also drove what we saw, not only in the UK, but also across Europe, governments allowing people to travel during the Christmas period over fears that they didn't want to be seen as the Grinch that stole Christmas? I think partly that, but also they, you know, it is, I guess, part of the job of political leaders to try to give people a sense of hope of a way forward. But I think that all of them would do well to under promise and over deliver. I think, we, you know, we've seen far too much of the other. There's been such a desperate desire to say we're at the end of the road. And again, even last night, though, Boris Johnson was a little bit more sober than he usually is in his in his communications. He couldn't resist at the end saying, you know, this is the we're now on the last track and we've got the vaccine coming on track. But, you know, the more you look into the, the vaccine uh, here in the UK and across Europe, I think people are kidding themselves if they think that we're all going to get this shot in the arm uh, anytime soon. I think the vaccine rollout is has a risk of becoming the next big fiasco in this whole story. 
Now, it, it, there is a long-term knowledge of your distaste for the Conservatives, especially Boris Johnson. You yourself made mistakes during the handling of the foot-and-mouth crisis. You sent Tony Blair out to the cameras wearing a yellow hazmat suit, which some analysts believe cost the UK a billion pounds in lost revenue from American tourists. As somebody who's been involved in these emergency planning decisions, how hard is it? Where do the decisions come from? Is it the protection of public health? Is there always an eye on the cost to the economy? How does it all work and how stressful is that? <laughs> just just very briefly to rebut you on the foot and mouth, the thing that cost us with the Americans was the fact that the TV networks in America had Britain on fire when all the cattle were burning. That was what did us the damage and stopped people coming here. But that put that to one side. Look, it's very, very difficult. And I don't underestimate how difficult this is for any government. But when you say, how does the decision making get made? Ultimately, in a crisis, it is one of those situations where the top person in government has to take control. So the reason why in something like foot and mouth, which was one of the worst crises we had, uh, you know, nothing on a not on a par with what's happening with, with the pandemic, but it was very, very difficult. The prime minister has to step in and there comes a point where he has to get a grip. And so you literally do have to grip all of the decision making process, all of the facts, all of the science. And you then have to lead from the front. And I think that. That's what's I, what I think has been missing, in, uh, certainly in the UK. And I think in, you know, the other countries have, have done better. But ultimately, you know, Germany, I would say Angela Merkel's leadership and the leadership of a lot of the 16 lender has been good. But Germany's got a massive problem. So in the end, it, that's why I say it's about having the honest conversation with the public. The public will take an awful lot. We're seeing that again with the third lockdown today. The public will take it as long as the leaders are being honest about the decisions that they're making and the reasons behind them, and they're honest about the consequences of the choices that they're taking.